Hey you guys, Jessie here from Urban Legends Antiques and this week we're doing a booth talk. So let's get started. I like to use whatever tape I have laying around, even if it's stubborn tape, like what I'm using today. And I just tear off a couple of pieces and I make these little cross hatches and these represent the corners of my booth. When opening up a new booth, or when preparing to go to a vintage market, I like to measure out my space on the floor of my garage. The space I'm measuring out is about eight by 10. It's a little bit on the smaller side. And part of the reason why I like to do like this little staging in my garage is to see how everything's gonna fit in my booth. I also check where I have outlets in my space. And then I put these little markers down to denote where an outlet would be in my booth. So one of the things that I get asked by a lot of new booth owners is what am I looking for when renting a booth? And some of the answers are pretty generic. You can find them on the internet and that is, what are they doing for inventory control? How much is the rent there? How often are the payouts? Kind of stuff like that. And you can find a lot of those answers by doing a quick Google search. But one of the things that I've noticed is missed a lot is are there outlets in my booth? For me, having outlets in my booth is very important because we sell a lot of lamps and lighting. We repair a lot of antique lamps and then we sell them. So if I have no outlets in my booth, it's a no-go for me. I will not rent that booth. A lot of times, even when I'm renting a space at a craft fair or a vintage market, I ask if there's an outlet available for me that I can plug my lamps and lighting into to showcase them for my market. Sometimes if you're outside, it's hard, but I've been lucky enough, a couple of the vintage markets I've been to when I ask if there's an outlet, they'll place me somewhere where there's like an outdoor outlet that people will use to plug in like Christmas lights and stuff, and I'm able to use them for the vintage market. Here's some old markers that we have on the floor of the garage. This is from a 10 by 10 space that we were working on. Okay, so now we have our makeshift booth, which is also where I do my spraying. And then here you can see all these little cross hatches on the ground. So knowing the size of your booth is very important. In markets, sometimes they let you do kind of like a little spillage, you know, where you can have a little bit of stuff kind of trickling out of your booth into like walkways because a lot of the times they're much wider than what you would have in your shop. But in my shop, our, um, our walkways are measured for ADA compatibility. So I'm not allowed to have any spillage past the demarcation lines of my booth. So I have to stay right inside of those lines and stay very tight and controlled in it. And if there's if there's any type of like little bit sticking out, the owner of the shop comes by and she moves it in. And if it doesn't fit inside of my booth, she will turn it and move it. Or she's even removed things because we wanna be accessible to all of our customers, including customers that use walkers and wheelchairs. It's very important that I keep all of my furniture within the lines of my booth. I'm gonna start staging. For the purposes of this video, I am using project pieces in our garage. These are pieces that are not done yet. They're not perfect. They're not ready to go into the shop. It's just to give you an idea of how to move the furniture around to maximize your space because every little inch of space you have, you're paying for and you want to make the most out of the area that you have so you can hopefully make the most money. I have this four tier galvanized tin shelving system and it's a really quick, easy way to set up something for display if you've sold a piece of furniture or if you're going to markets and you need light easy things to move that piece is perfect to do that with i like to set an island up in the middle of my booth and i try to do this as much as possible the booth i'm in right now is a little bit on the narrow side so it's difficult to do this but i have plans to try to put something thinner down the middle of my booth like a table like this. And what happens is when people go into your booth and they're, they're shopping, they're only looking along the back wall. When you put an island in the middle of your booth, you've almost created like another wall that you can merchandise off of and you're doubling the amount of space in your booth that people can shop from. Okay, so now we're here. And do I love this? Do I hate it? I don't know yet. We're just kind of making a pretend booth to see how everything goes in. There's the corner. Here would be a back piece. Here's a corner. So I'd have to move this one over a little bit more. So 
if you imagine trying to walk through here, that would be narrow, especially um, for people who have walkers and wheelchairs. So this area needs to be reworked a little bit. And then um, this area in the back needs to be reworked a little bit. So we're gonna keep going and see what we end up with. When in doubt, stack. Stack your pieces, start stacking your furniture. Try to find interesting ways to stack your furniture on top of each other. Like this may not necessarily be interesting, but it is unexpected. That's not something you would see, but it would stop someone while they're walking and they would look because they'd say, why is that on there? Oh, look at all this cool stuff that's on here. Let me look at this. Maybe I like this piece of furniture. This coffee table can hold so much stuff on it. It's so sturdy, oh my goodness. Maybe I want this coffee table. I'm pulling out my portable backdrop. We use this at shows a lot. It's on wheels and it's easy to move and I love taking it with us. It's big so like usually when we go to shows we have a box truck anyways that we rent so we just put this in the back of the box truck. But let me tell you when you're moving at the end of a show after three or four days of working rolling this thing through instead of having to pick it up and carry it is so convenient this was actually a cherry picker chuck had built to um, replace the engine in our daughter's car and afterwards we kept it we put wood on it and we turned it into our backdrop it has been a game changer so the island didn't work out it was a dud so i'm going for height now i have tall pieces and i'm putting them towards the back of my booth and then i'm going to work on building my pyramids afterwards when talking about my pyramids, I mean, I actually build a pyramid in my booth. So I go from a low point towards the front of my shop and then I angle everything up to a tall point towards the back of my shop. And that draws the eye of your shopper up and in to your booth. And that's very important to help encourage people to want to walk into your shop and look around and browse. Why is browsing important for your shopper? Because the longer they spend in your booth browsing around, the more likely they are to purchase. When staging my booth, I'm always thinking of my customer. I'm always thinking about the person who is shopping my booth. That's why I use the pyramid format. I want people to look into my booth and easily and quickly be able to see everything in my booth and then they can decide if they want to go in or not. So with the pyramid form, you have the tallest things at the back of the booth and then you have the shorter things towards the front of the booth. And then I would like everything to be beautifully staged and set up so that way something will hopefully entice them to come into my booth. Putting the chair catty corner like this is a cool look for the booth, but people will not necessarily want to reach behind that to buy things off of there. So I wouldn't put things that I'm trying to sell behind the chair. And here I'm trying to get an island in my booth again. This time I'm using a narrow bench. Again, there is not enough room to walk around with the chairs and the bench. So I'm going to move the chairs towards the front of my booth. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so that way you know when we have new videos coming out. Also, if you could share this video with your family and friends, it would really help our channel grow. Thank you. Okay, just standing in this area, I don't think there's enough room for people to comfortably walk through my booth. So I'm gonna move the bench underneath my portable backdrop and then stack the mirror on top. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques, and I have a website with items available to ship, urbanlegendsantiques.com. I'm trying to maximize every bit of space that I have in my booth, and I have some space on the side of the coffee table, so I'm gonna see if I can stack the rocking chair, this little antique child's rocking chair on top. And it doesn't fit. It's about to fall off the side of the coffee table. So I'm gonna put it in that little corner where I put the blue chair instead. Okay, so far I have two chairs, a rocking chair, a bench, a dresser, two shelving units, a lamp, a headboard, and a mirror in this booth, and we still have a ways to go. Now I'm gonna put down a pretend carpet. Whenever I put carpet down in my booth or a rug of any sort, Chuck inevitably trips on it and then says, we need to take it out because someone's gonna trip and fall. Right now I have a rug hanging on the wall because I tried to put it on the ground and Chuck tripped on it. Okay, now that I've got the booth set up 
kind of how I like it. I'm going to start staging some of the smaller items. These items are staged and then I would use them to merchandise with in my booth. While staging my furniture, I'm doing a color story. So there is a theme of wood and metal and there's a little bit of white in there. So I added in the white birdhouse that you see in the back corner. I put that metal planter onto the metal shelving system and I have three metal canisters that I'm going to put onto the wooden backdrop on the side. And that will just kind of have a continuation of the story of the colors and the theme of woods and metals that I have in my booth right now. I like to keep between three and four mirrors in my booth at all times because they make your booth seem larger, but also when you place items in front of it, they reflect the items and it looks like you have a larger stock than what you actually do. It's just a little trick to make it seem like you have more stock. Okay, so here we go with just a little bit of work and configuring. If you imagine this is my booth, we're gonna start with these two chairs here right on the end when you walk in. We have a dresser here. All of my stuff when I'm kind of figuring out how I'm gonna work a space, I have it on little caster wheels like that so we can move it around easily. Remember where my, down there, see that little line? That's where my outlet would be. So I put a lamp there for light. Here for the back of the booth would be the tall piece. I don't know if I would call this my money wall. This is just like the tall part to, um, if you go here along this line, see it it pulls the eye up and in. And you wanna um, pull the eye in so people wanna come into your shop. I kinda feel like this would be my money wall just because there's so many shelves on it. Usually this is in the back of my booth when I'm doing uh, fairs or uh, markets because all of the shelving, we can put a lot of stuff on it and then it's so sturdy. We'll put brackets here, then you can hang on it as well. And over here on this side, just so you can see all the shelves, I have a bench below it. So sometimes if you have like a, a narrow bench or something like that, you can put it right here down the middle, which I've done before. But um, with the chairs and everything, that's why I like to do a practice run first. There wouldn't be enough room to walk. You could um, put the chairs on the back somehow and then put this bench right down the middle and then put this side table underneath here. I always try to think about the ladies with walkers because um, they're bumping into stuff inevitably. I always remember my mom with her walker was always hitting stuff. Now you kind of have like a basic configuration of how you want your booth to be. I'm gonna try and get more furniture in. I'm gonna pull this hutch in and then I'm still trying to do an island. I'm gonna move these chairs into the middle and try to turn them into an island. Okay, so by doing this, Obviously, I would want to move these two because I want to continue to create that diagonal line. So I'd want this one to be here and this one to be here, but um, that one's too heavy to move. It's not on rollers. <laughs> so, but by doing this, I have been able to fit even more furniture into my booth. Um, I think this is interesting the way it's set up like this. And you can still walk through. I'm going to walk all the way around and just check to make sure. So I'm liking this width right here between the bench and the chairs. I'm pretty sure you can get a narrow walker through here. The plus size or the wider walkers wouldn't fit, but you know, we're just practicing. I like the chairs there. I feel like as an island, you can still see through them. They still add interest. And um, I want to try this in my booth now. When you have a middle thing, you can start putting things on here. Like I will probably put pillows on here, put a hook for a wreath hanger here. I have a wreath. It's an ugly wreath, but... <laughs> that's so ugly reads but just something like that i would probably do like a contrasting color like white or something for a wreath or like a ruffled linen wreath just something for interest let me see what else do i have you could put a little bird cage on it that's interesting this is very eye-catching because it's unexpected i think i'm going to do this in my shop maybe i will put like grab and go items if someone doesn't want to go all the way to my booth they could just quickly pick something up off of the chair to purchase as they continue to shop through the whole store. Also, if you want, you could just have this be a dad chair. <laughs> I've seen this numerous times where there's a chair kind of set up in the middle of the booth like this. There's a dad hanging out on it, just waiting for the family to finish shopping. But if he likes it, he'll buy it. <laughs> if it's comfortable enough for him, he may take it home. So you could just leave your chair like this 
I would maybe put a little stand right here with like some books, something that would be interesting to a guy or like little metal cars or a train or something, just little knickknacks that he would want to look at while he sat here and waited for the wife to finish shopping or the husband, depending on where you're at. <laughs> Even over here, like how it is, it's not horrible having it set up like this. It's just, for me, it's not aesthetically pleasing, but you would then have this wall that you could hang pictures on. Could put an ugly wreath up there if you wanted to. So this is a quick little tutorial and this is how I get ready for markets. And when I um, rearrange my booth, I'll do a quick little sketch. Or when I move into a new booth, I do this. I, I go in, I get the measurements, I find out where the uh, outlets are and stuff and I start planning my booth. Okay, you guys, thanks, that's all. I'm Jessie from Urban Legends Antiques and thanks for coming along for the ride. Oh my gosh, why? Why is it as soon as the camera lens turns on me, I get like tongue twisted. I just, I can't say anything other than bad words. I wanna say bad words all the time. Those come out easily.